Yo, the center console could fit both oh. big gulps in them. <laughs> we were spinning out, hit the guardrail, boom. Chuck E. Cheese, SeaWorld, um, KB Toys, Universal Studios. It was a fun first car. Yeah. Pumped it full of just eBay junk. Oh, I didn't, no. I didn't know you couldn't drive through water. Ah. What up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you in part by HelloFresh. You know what HelloFresh is. It's the service that brings farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. I love HelloFresh because I love to cook, right? I do. I love cooking and I'm not looking for something that replaces cooking. I'm not looking to like have meals, complete meals delivered to me and basically reheat them. And then I feel like I'm eating like leftovers or something. It's never that great. With HelloFresh, I still do the cooking. It's just that the sucky parts of the cooking are eliminated. Trying to spend time figuring out exactly what to make that's not just a repeated thing I make every week. Going to the store, wasting time, digging through produce. Like HelloFresh handles all of that. The recipes are really easy. The recipe cards they send you are uh, clearly printed. You know, you can read them from a couple feet away. They got big fonts, they got nice pictures. They're uh, the kind of thing that once you make the recipe, you keep it around. That way, if you ever wanna make the recipe again in bigger quantities for like a party or something, it's great. The produce and the meats are always fresh. Right? And the way they package them and deliver them, it's very easy, right? Every, all the spices and stuff, stuff that if you go to the grocery store and you wanna get like seasonings and spices that you don't just keep on hand, and you're trying to make one recipe, you end up spending seven, eight dollars on this jar of spices to make one recipe, and then it sits in your cupboard forever, taking up space, going bad, and then a year later when you wanna use it, then now you gotta go buy it again. I like HelloFresh because they give you the exact amount of seasoning and spices and stuff that you need. And that way there's less food waste, right? All the produce, all the meats, all the seasonings, all the sauces, they're the exact amount you need. So you save time in the measuring out phase. You save dishes because you're not using measuring spoons or measuring cups. It's great. You could bust out the grill on a nice warm evening and make uh, a dinner from HelloFresh's cookout collection with recipes like Melty Monterey Jack Burgers. It is great. You, got, you can customize dishes with Hello Custom by uh, swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrade for a more luxe experience, or add protein to a vegetarian meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals truly tailored to you. It's 72% cheaper than a restaurant and cheaper than grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. So go to HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire16 and use code SmokingTire16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire16, code SmokingTire16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. You need to use the URL and the code. HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire16 and then code SmokingTire16. All right, we're also brought to you today in part by Policy Genius, right? We pay hundreds of dollars a year to protect our homes, our cars, and even our phones, but too many of us aren't taking any steps to protect our family's finances. Mortgage payments, private student loans, and other types of debt don't just disappear if something happens to you. A life insurance policy can provide your loved ones with a financial cushion they can use to cover these costs, and it can provide you with the peace of mind that even in a worst case scenario, they will be protected. And having life and through insurance through your job might not be enough. Most people need up to 10 times more coverage to properly provide for their families. And coverage through work isn't portable. If you leave your job, the policy 
doesn't go with you, meaning there could be a gap in coverage when you need it the most. Life insurance typically gets more expensive as you age, so it's smart to get a policy sooner rather than later. By making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure that you're not paying one cent more than you have to for the coverage you need. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that makes it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place to find your lowest price on life insurance. So you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Options start at just $17 a month for $500,000 of coverage. Just click the link in the description or head over to policygenius.com to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. The licensed agents at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies, and they're on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options so you can make decisions with confidence. Policy Genius doesn't add extra fees, they don't sell your information, they have thousands of five-star reviews, and they have options that offer coverage in as little as a week, avoiding unnecessary medical exams. So head over to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Also brought to you in part today by Off The Record. You know Off The Record, we talk about them all the time. Off The Record is the way to avoid having a silly little ticket ruin your driver's license, your insurance, and your finances for years, right? Tickets are not necessarily about safety, unless you do something really dangerous or egregious. Many times they are about raising money for the state, raising your money for the state. And that means there's a whole financial ecosystem around you getting tickets for something very minor and you're just trying to get to work, right? You get a ticket, you plead guilty, there's the fine. You go to court, there's court costs. You find you're found guilty. The insurance, your insurance uh, rates go up for years sometimes. It's a whole roundy round ecosystem that you do not want to be a part of. That's why Off the Record is here. Off the Record is a service that will match you with a qualified attorney where you live, in your jurisdiction, where, or necessarily where you live, where you got that ticket, more importantly. Maybe you got that ticket somewhere far away from home. Maybe that's why you should use off the record. Imagine you getting a ticket and then having to go all the way across the country to a different state to go fight it later. I mean, that's an excellent reason to use off the record. They will go fight that ticket on your behalf. You don't have to go back there. That's another expense that you don't need from getting a dumb ticket. I once got a ticket in Virginia and I lived in New York and it was mandatory court appearance. I had to go all the way back down to Virginia to fight this ticket. It cost me thousands of dollars, right? If I had off the record at this time, they could have just gone for me, made the points go away, kept that ticket off my record, saved me time, saved me money, saved me headache. So. Two ways to use Off The Record. You can go to offtherecord.com slash TST, or you can download the Off The Record app to your phone and use code TST10 on the Off The Record app. Either method will save you 10% on any legal services booked through Off The Record, okay? Download the app, have it in your phone, you're ready to go. It's so easy. If you get a ticket, you just upload a photo of the ticket to Off The Record and they will do the rest. So go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app. That is how it's done. It's very, very easy. All right, folks, I've been trying for three years to get this dude on the podcast. He's bad at the DMs, as it turns out, but he is great on the radio. Eugene Hertretch, AKA Hurt. From Hoonigan, this dude is legendary. He breaks everything he touches. Uh, he is hilarious. He is very engaging. He's smart. He's funny. Uh, his videos are hysterical. And um, according to the magazine I work for, Road and Track, he is one of, if not the most important automotive influencer today. Uh, we go through Hertz's entire life story set against a backdrop of all the cars he's broken. <laughs> Hurt, 
is on the Smoking Tire podcast. Oh, and sidebar, uh, the book I recommend to him, which I've recommended to many of you in the past, is The Power of Now. If you uh, wanna get out of your own head and be more present, The Power of Now is an excellent book. Hurt on the Smoking Tire podcast, here we go. We're here. <sighs> Fucking when Vin was here the other day, he yeah. told me the origin story of meeting you in an English town yeah. hotel room. Yeah, it's it's a memory that escapes me. <laughs> you know, it's like you're just by yourself living your best life. That wasn't like your <laughs> you know? was it, that wasn't like your first Hoonigan experience. No, I also had, right. I had already was, been working at Hoonigan okay, okay, for all right. like three or four oh, years all right, or something yeah. like that. Oh, so you were like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, I was just, you know. Well, we were there to give uh like people want a contest to come there oh yeah so like random guy comes to my room i'm like no way that <laughs> you're like is this how the contest yeah works? you like, know surprise no <laughs> the prize is you share a room with her yeah you know that's funny just, yeah it was an interesting interesting thing it's been an interesting ride man it's been uh i'm gone on 10 years i think yeah yeah um just yeah it's been insane were you how much of you is shaped by the last 10 years of being with this crowd and how much of it comes from you beforehand? Um, what, when, like obviously you're fucking you, but yeah. like but like the fucking dirtbag breaking cars, fucking so, unprofessional. How much is of that the is The reason why my relationship with Hoonigan worked is because the brand literally is my definition, <laughs> in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, like the reason it, we came together and everything is like, so I had already been making videos, drifting, Drift Alliance guys, you know, Turk, Forsberg, all those guys. I was hanging out with those guys at English Town a lot, making videos of them and of other things. Um, but hanging out with those guys ended up at a party where Scotto was and like, we don't remember meeting each other because we were both drunk, mm. but there was a picture on Facebook of us sharing tacos. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, all right. Where I was guess, the party? Do you uh, remember? Forsberg's house. Oh, okay. He, I think he just won a championship, and everyone was just this having was a good what, time. This was what, 07, 08? 2010, 10, 11, okay. something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, um, and we just became friends off of that photo alone, and then like I was doing my thing. I had my RX-7 with the V8. Were you were you doing competition or just fucking around? No, I, I honestly this year is my first year doing competition. I've never done competition drifting before. It's oh. all, always just been for fun. Yeah. Um so it's been fun like trying something new. Uh but is it weird to take something that's like always been a fuck around thing and make it into like a competition or did you well, or did you feel competitive even while fucking around? The competition part doesn't feel weird, but turning my passion into my career oh. that part like that part kind of got like it was you know it's like oh i don't know it's not it's not a bad thing but it changed it a yeah, little bit you it know does. yeah um driving sports cars is really fun until you fucking have to right and now you have now i gotta pay my mortgage i have to go right, drive right. whatever the fuck is around yeah so yeah. It's, i know you i know how you feel it's still cool it's still super it's better cool. better than man. doing a lot of other yeah, things yeah i mean i could be at walmart or yeah my <laughs> Fun fact: I was Chuck E. Cheese for three days when I was 16. really. Yeah, you mean like in the I costume? I was Chucky. Oh shit! Yeah, I was Chucky for three days. Oh, dude. I was like, this is not How the life smell for me. in there. You know, I don't remember the smell, <laughs> but I just remember like, you know, goggle vision. Yeah. Where you know, I just remember looking at stuff through that yeah. like, rat head. But maybe it's, that trained you for like spatial awareness. You know, for drifting, like, yeah. you can't see the yeah. better. Yeah. Oh yeah, the proximity. <laughs> for Have sure. you ever tried to? Drive a drift car as Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, I think there'd be, there's a good throwback video. If we uh, all did a fucking video wearing the outfit your, your of our shittiest job, job. Oh my God. Yeah. That's I, actually, I slung sh shoes at Foot Locker for six great, years, dude. I was the, I the ref's outfit. Honestly. Whole shit. The ref's outfit. outfit in the Mustang, that's kind of hot. Oh, that would have been yeah, good. Yeah, it's kind of hot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it would have been all yeah, right. Yeah, Maybe I should get fucking, oh, the homie, um, He's always trying to get me to get a new custom racing suit from him. Maybe I should get one that looks Full like a rat suit. Sign me up for a rat suit. <laughs> if you're gonna, that's my helmet. I'll yeah. get Chuck E. Cheese painted but, on my helmet. Dude, we're we're both like profile enough at this point. We're gonna get a trademark. <laughs> Fucking Chuck E. Cheese is coming Copy. after your ass. Honestly, the, the best thing that could ever happen to me is to get sued by Chuck E. Cheese. Like one hundred percent. Like you're taking me seriously. Yeah. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. All right, elevate the profile. Seriously, man. You 
you um, should. I bet you could find a rat suit somewhere. That that would be kind of fucking funny. eBay's got one. That like someone, funny. what's that fucking fast fashion site? Yeah. <laughs> like uh, I don't even know if Chuck E. Cheese was my worst job. It was, no, what was your worst job? Well, I was. Uh, I worked at SeaWorld for a little bit, like oh, a no. summer. You know, a summer yeah. job. I was sixteen, and uh, I was the cotton candy guy you know spun him up yeah can you no, still no, no, do no, no, it no 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 sorry not the spin up guy uh i would walk around the crowd oh, and with sell like yeah, yeah. Candies. Uh, that's that's yeah. a sucky job but that you know that part of it wasn't the worst part of it the dolphins were bullies like you would walk by the oh, dolphin they, well, and they would they would attack you. Well, with they water. had fucking PTSD. Yeah, as dude. it turns oh, out, I, I trust, I don't you go, were like these look. dolphins are assholes. Now you're like, oh man, yeah. they were abusing the fuck out of these dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally get it. I don't I don't represent that place, bro. Four hundred and nineteen bucks. You're in fucking Chuck E. Man, Cheese. Was that, that the rat suit? Uh, that give or take. That looks. <laughs> it was a. I feel like the head was a little. Yeah, this feels know, like a knockoff. That's a. Yeah. Is this Wish.com? Did shop shop pajama. Yeah. Oh, those those shop are pajamas, pajamas, which is a website I never knew existed, and yeah. and now I can't look away from. Yeah, there's no way. Like Chuck E. Cheese has definitely got to sue them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, 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 like, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, but uh, yeah. so cotton. All right, cotton candy at Sea World, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, you had some. You had some shitty ones. What else? What else was in that um, list of terrible? Those are probably. Those are probably the. Uh, oh, I worked at like KB Toys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it Retail's was, rough, dude. That was terrible. Retail was, for kids. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. It was. That was a terrible time. I remember that too. My uh, first job was at Woolworths. Yeah. Woolworths. Yeah. Remember Woolworths? Oh, uh, I don't. Woolworths was like a shittier Kmart. Okay. Like it was the original I don't Kmart. Think they had that in Florida. I grew up in Florida. Yeah. They. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? Thirty-five. Oh, so you're on, you're a little younger than me. So I know Kmart. My, my dad yeah. was the fucking CEO of Woolworths. Wow. Which also owned Foot Locker. That's how I ended up working at Foot Locker. It. it all comes. And I worked fucking hard at Foot Locker, but uh, but at Woolworths, and my dad shut World Woolworths down. Yeah. That, that, that's why it doesn't exist anymore. That's why I'm forty and you're thirty-five. That's why you've never heard of it because you were ten <laughs> right. and I was fifteen when it was just done. But I fucking stacked stacked shelves at. Woolworths, and the only thing I really learned from Woolworths is what dead rat smells like. Dead rat. Now I can smell dead rat wow. instantly Just anywhere I go. I've walked into grocery stores and made a fucking hard nope. Just like, wow. fucking about face. Can you explain I know the smell? Mm. Is it, it's just a... It's like... It's, it's simultaneously like disgusting, but also kind of like... This sounds wrong, but kind of sweet almost mm. like um like in the same way that like like weed smell could be kind of sweet I see, you know I see, what i, I mean I like or like citronella candle could be kind of sweet right. it's like kind of like that but also really gross but mm. once you smell it and someone has identified what it is you'll never fucking unsmell it right yeah it's horrible okay so i that, that's a life lesson to know because i mean i'd like the, pre the, the presence i mean it's not a bad smell to have because to be it's able a good to, one to bank right yeah yeah right. very to, useful to about face at a grocery store because of dead rats yep. i'm into that yep. yeah yeah i always uh a lot of uh base businesses like if you ever go somewhere where the grocery store is underground mm -hmm. Like at the bottom level of a parking garage or something yep. like that. That's where I've only been to one of those. There's one right here, and yeah, I fucking I think it was the here. one in Marina Del Rey. Yeah, yeah. I don't go there. It's it's dead, fucking full of dead rats. Fucking the, the instant, the oh second you God. walk in the door, and <laughs> I'm it, gonna walk in there just to like. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I mean, yeah. If you, you know? wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna learn what this smell is like yeah. to bank it, the, the yeah, Gelson's in Marina Del Rey. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other weird thing here. I just want to know the smell. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's an important one to have. Just go. <laughs> Okay, bank that right. fucking yep. out. Got it. Got yeah, yeah. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you start, when you you started drifting for fun on your fucking Sea World cotton candy money? <laughs> no, I didn't have any money then. What was your um, first drift car? So my first drift car was uh, Mazda RX-7. Oh, okay. Um, so that's how you got down the rotary. Yeah. So rotary. I'll backtrack a little bit. So like, yeah, um, Chuck E. Cheese. SeaWorld, uh, KB Toys, Universal Studios. Like, I had all these. You made the rounds of fucking garbage Jews. jobs. Just, I did my best to yeah. work as shitty as possible for, <laughs> you know, yeah. the my younger years of life. And yeah. then um, and then I fell into a, a job valet parking oh. at Hard Rock Hotel. Hell yeah. Yeah, and that's when I was like, oh, 
you know, I made yeah. 150 bucks a day. I spend 120 bucks a day. You know, like I, I was an idiot. I did not save a single penny from from the four years that I worked valet. Uh, but it was just to be young and to get that kind of income, and like, yeah, it was a great time for me. So, like, quite a few successful people we know. Zach being one of them. My friend, you know Sarah, stunt driver Sarah? Yeah. Stunt driver Sarah, valet got discovered, valet parking. Yeah. Like people, valet parking it's, is a is an entry level door into a car job. 100%. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, well, it, it's, it, you know, if you love cars already, that job is. You get so much experience yeah. maneuvering cars. Mm -hmm. And if you get your spatial you awareness. You never lose the parking. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I can reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. like it's, you never lose that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, my first car was a 1994 Honda Accord. Okay. E EX with VTEC. Oh, shit. Yeah, you know. It's actually a good car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that car. <laughs> That's it was a good a great, car. It was a great car. Yeah. Uh, my mom got it for me as a gift. And uh, Accords were still kind of like small then. It was before yeah. Accords got really oh, big. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Difference yeah. between an Accord and a Civic was more trim than size right, at that time. Right. Yeah. So it, it was a still, you know, all things considered, a, you know, limbo car. It was a fun first car. Yeah. I pumped it full of just eBay junk and, you know, sound system and enjoyed myself. Yeah. Uh, anytime I What hear, was your most shameful eBay junk? Um, all right, well, it's not even eBay. It's Home Depot. Oh, shit. Yeah. This, oh, shit. So, so the beginning of the end of this car is when I put a Home Depot ducting intake. Yes. Yes. Intake like a laundry, yes. yeah. a laundry tube. Yeah, and yes. I didn't know anything about Ajax or anything. I uh. threw all that shit away. <laughs> car never ran right again. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm not going to tell my mom. Your you know? AFR like, was <laughs> fucked. <yeah. laughs> mm, uh, you know the Honda? Mm, uh, yeah. mm, uh, and I was just like, well. Man, this shit doesn't Maybe that's just that's No, just it's what got a little cam that's that's so yeah, funny. Just, cold air intake sounds sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't know shit. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And then um, I ended We've up. We've all been there. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. My early, I put a Hearst T-handle shifter on my, like like you'd find on a fucking Boss Mustang yeah. on my Subaru Legacy GT. Nice. Yeah, I did. It felt like. Mm, Bro, I was ripping through yeah. gear. <laughs> and phantom lights. And I put phantom lights on that you, bitch, you too. You went through some stuff. But this was in 97. It's Fast so, and Furious came out right, in 2000. Right. So you, I, it was shameful. Was the movie about you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> if you want to learn if the movie. <laughs> I was directly inspired by yeah. Vin Diesel. Yeah. Yeah, he came to do he, like, he studied he studied with me. Like Street Sharks vest Vin Diesel or It was bro, the vest I did fuck with the vest. You see that, there's a picture of me over there with that car. Oh, really? Yeah, and I had fucking uh I had smash mouth hair. A Greenwich, Connecticut, North Face vest. And what you can't see is I'm wearing the 14-hole Doc Martens Nine Inch Nails boots. Nice. I was very confused. You were into it. Very confused. You're, yeah. <laughs> Buried. All right, so you ruined your accord. Yeah. Um, you know, this... this on the, like This goes on a sound bad out loud. You know, got that car, wrecked it. Got another car, not important, wrecked it. And then got another car that... You know, my mom's like, I'm not buying you another car, dude. You know, so I wrecked two cars. Um, she, she's like, I'm not buying you another car, figure it out. So I uh, collected some cash from my valet job and bought my first car, which was a 19, 1992 Honda Civic hatchback. Okay, yeah, good e, car. Yeah, EG6. It was I'm waiting like, for the part that's going to sound bad. Uh, well, You're like famous for breaking cars. Uh, yeah, Telling me yeah. you broke two well, cars is like the least surprising yeah. thing you could tell. Well, when you crashed them, were you like, was this your entry into performance driving? I no, mean, this is nice no, 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 no. This okay. was my entry into learning that you need things for cars to function properly. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so the first one, my Honda Accord, it was raining. I'm in Florida. I've never changed the front tires of before. Course. Did a ton of burnouts. Right. You know? So, like, I'm just driving and the car's just like, shoo. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and and, and like, someone was like, no, when they get to slicks, that's good. Yeah. yeah well, no, I didn't learn then. Yeah. The second car, same thing. Bunch of burnouts, bald front tires. My friend, so I'm with my best friend from high school. His name is Chris. And we're helping his dad's best friend pick up his car somewhere way far away, mm -hmm. right? And so. Um, we drop them off at this place. It's so far away. This is before, like, you need MapQuest. Yeah. You know, to get places. Yeah, you and get stapled together. Yeah. Like MapQuest. So, so, you know, I take him to the place, and then he's gung-ho about racing me or whatever. <laughs> and this guy's just dipping, you know? And I'm like, I don't know where we're going, you know? And we're going around this big off-ramp 
it's slightly wet. Yeah. I did the tire Same shit. Again. And, um, but this, this crash is something that's just embedded in my head. It's like the car is spinning out, me and my friend look at each other, you know, as we're about to die. Oh, you got and, the time. And you're going, oh, oh this is going to be fucked Full time work. Yeah, we had just stopped no. the 7-Eleven. We both got big gulps. <laughs> the, the, you know, the center console could fit both oh. big gulps in them. <laughs> we were spinning out, hit the guardrail. Boom, big gulps. Smash into each other. All the fluids. Fountain of all oh, the wow. In the air between us. Hanging And like the car space. spins, and it all just lands on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> he spun Dude, in, uh, into it like, yeah. like, like in the fluid, space. The like, fluid was in the air, like and the car the... just, and then gravity set right on Oh, him, my know? God. Yeah. That's, and that's hilarious. Yeah, it's it's something I'll never forget. <laughs> it's But, you know, I crashed That's like cars. a Wachowski film. Yeah. It's like the fucking Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, honestly, like, I, I can replay that endlessly. That's hilarious. Just like orange and clear fluid smashing together. You're like, grab the you cup and catch it. Yeah. You should try to recreate Dude, that. That'd that, be hilarious. Yeah, we got high-speed cameras yeah. now. You could shoot that. Yo, fucking Ken, let me get one yeah, of those right. 240 frames a second. Can I get like half a percent of Jim Connor budget to make a film about me crashing a car and soda flying everywhere? Yeah, then you gotta hit a guardrail. Yeah, yeah. I'm down. Okay. It's like a, it could be like a Mythbusters <laughs> yeah. segment. That's Can you recreate that? Yeah. That, that would be fun. Dude, re re recreating your funniest car crash yeah. would be would be a good one. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I crashed those cars like a dipshit. But um, so you got the Civic. You scraped together. Civic, you got a Civic catch. Good car. Cut the springs. <laughs> got an actual eBay intake. Good car. A, immediately ruined. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice car. It was really clean. You know, it was a really yeah. nice car. Put today some, it's worth forty thousand dollars. <laughs> I, I like it's. You know, I'm currently at this phase where I'm just trying to buy all the cars that I had or wanted uh -huh. but never could build. Yeah. You know, and just trying to do that. Which is a mission of its own, but um, yeah, I got the Civic. I cut the springs, put a cold air intake on it, put eBay headers, you know, um, and they go. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one worked. This one worked. It did sound like that, but the, the, no, no weird IAC thing, nothing like that. But um, I forgot that I actually did this cold air intake. It rained. My neighborhood flooded. Oh I no! I didn't know you couldn't drive through water, <laughs> and. Just sucked up, blew the motor. <laughs> yeah. Took it to my friend's house, pulled the plugs out, cranked it over, <laughs> shooting water out. Oh, no. We swapped the motor, but... Um Sometimes I don't, you know, I, I forgot all about that phase until right now. You know, I forgot that. <laughs> That's what we do here. That happened. We make you relive uh, your childhood yeah, right? car trauma. Yeah, all of my dipshittery <laughs> just flooding right back into my brain. Um, but eventually, um, you know, get the motor swapped. I learned a lot from from that situation. You put a better motor. No, same Just motor. Same motor. Yeah, yeah, D15. Nothing crazy. So you know? did you have the <clears throat> mechanical knowledge for that swap, or did no. your friend so, Andy make the so interpret you? Another one of my best friends at the time. So his family is what got me into cars. My family's not into cars. There, I don't really have any other car influence other than video games and stuff. But I didn't know you could do real stuff in cars outside of video games until I like started hanging out with yeah. these people. So um, they were. You know, A86, RX-7 people, you know, and his cousin had just rotated fast cars. Like, he would just always have a, he would sell, like, buy something, enjoy it for a month, go to car meets, get something else. He was just always. Was, it, was his cousin Vin? Yeah. <laughs> fast and Furious was about him, it like, sounds like. Yeah, Vin, Vin's paperclip to uh, GT3 story is insane. You yeah. Know? Like, I don't know if you, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's, G, it's GT3 RS now. He bought an RS. He, he traded up. You mean like in the last two La weeks? Last week. Really? It, gets, it got announced today, right? This video, weekend, so. yeah. You got an RS? Yeah. Really? Yes. Oh, man. Dude, for him. he is just like, I've never seen someone do what he did. And he sent me, yeah. uh, there was the video about his house, because we were talking about mid-century modern architecture mm -hmm. when he was here, and I watched whatever the YouTube video is about his house. His house is awesome. Yeah. And, I love uh, his house. And the yeah, the build he did on that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, good for Vin. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Fuck. Yeah, he, he, you know, put him, do the crime. The paperclip to GD did. That's funny. Yeah. Remember that kid who traded the, the paper clip to a boxster, yeah. I think it was? Yeah. To a house. He, he, just, got a, he got a house eventually? Yeah. yeah. Just, Get the fuck out of here. I think he him a book or something, yeah. That's wow. crazy. Yeah. That's cool. You ever try that? No. You I'm, ever try that shit? We should try that. Honestly, it'd be a fun game to if you can play it. It would. Know? If you had a fucking contest at Hoonigan. 
Who where can, everybody starts with here's fifty bucks. See what you can. Yeah, buy start with, with it a fucking and, Hoonigan T-shirt. Yeah, right. You know, that's some a, merch. That's a there great idea. See, I, I feel like I could definitely get a car out of a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you, probably, you probably, I bet, I bet you get a car in four moves or less. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. We should try that. We should do smoking tire versus Hoonigan barter contest. That'll be fun. Oh um, man, they, you want to go have, against Ben? Do no, you really want? No, to be here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go against your audience size. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah that, that's the truth. Yeah. yeah, your audience size X level of Grimes. Your fucking audience has garbage to trade for <laughs> fucking days. Yeah, we, yeah, hey, look, everybody uh, starts somewhere. Our, our, our audience, my audience is like, should I get the GT3 Touring yeah. or the Turbo S Lightweight? I have a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget. What do you think? I can only afford to pay a hundred over sticker. But like that's the market, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, can get, I can get you an RX-7. I can't help you with any of that other. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but um, um, so uh, this family is this family is helping you uh, yeah, learn about yeah, cars, yeah. swap the motor, right? So, um, so my friend's uncle, big car guy. I don't know if I made this up in my head or if I remember this correctly, but I remember one time, like there, he was a rotary guy. They're from Puerto Rico. Um, I went Puerto to Puerto Ricans love rotary, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah. They, I'm not trying to like no, no, no. stereotype. It's a thing. Legit, Puerto it's a Ricans thing. love rotaries. One hundred percent, it's a thing. Something like, about that flag on the hood with the sound of that engine. Uh, it really, da, 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 da. it really goes. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really so, goes together so, so, well. <laughs> um, so yeah. One time, you know, so my friend lived on like the main road. You know how they have houses on the main road, mm-hmm. and then like just down the street, his uncle le- lived in the neighborhood, and he was like in a cul-de-sac. And I remember one time went to his house. And I, like I said, I don't know if I make like if I made this memory up, but I remember he pulled this rotary like RX2 or like a Corolla box mm-hmm. with a rotary in it, loud as hell. Drove it around to the cul-de-sac, popped a wheelie, and put it back in the garage. <laughs> like, it was a maybe yeah, it, probably something happened. He's, it was just you know just like bop, you know it was it was how old are you at the time like seventeen. Uh, Probably okay. seventeen, yeah, seven, seventeen, eighteen. Have you ever seen another rotary pop a wheelie since? Dude, they do it all the time. Do they? Yeah, I guess the proper drag, drag car. cars. Yeah, it was a drag. drag it was yeah. a drag car. It was a full on. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was a drag car. They're, and you know. The cars they put those motors in are little. Yeah, six, seven. I saw some motherfucker with a Suzuki Sidekick or yeah. a Samurai with a, a Samurai yeah. with a crazy rotary yeah. in it, and he had to build some thing instead of the soft top in the back. He got got rid of the soft top. Yeah. He had to build some kind of contraption because the soft top kept getting blown out when yeah. he would cross like a hundred miles. That's a big swap. Is, is, is that popular? Yeah, yeah the Samurais. The Samurais and uh, uh, was it the Swift or something? What's the, what's the sidekick? The sidekick. Sidekick. Yeah, yeah. yeah they sw- yeah. they swap over. Sketchy. All the time, Real but. fucking sketchy. But yeah, so you know they're car people and they kind of help me like learn about cars they helped me learn about rx7 i i remember uh watching fast and furious and movie theaters with these people and stuff and like so they kind of catered my car needs helped me swap that motor and stuff and then like one day i was picking up my girlfriend had gotten a car accident i went to go pick her up uh we were waiting for the cops to come there was just like a parked car on the road mm-hmm. rain Spinning. Music, there's a consistency yeah, in these stories. You know, <laughs> is she borrowing your tires? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that we talked about this, uh, maybe I did a couple burnouts in that. Thing. But, um, but, you know, so I parked like way off the side of the road waiting yeah. for the cops to come and the, you know, whatever to clean up the car. And uh, some other person, like I'm just, I, we're sitting in the car, I'm looking in the rearview mirror and I just see lights oh, um, no. spinning. And I'm like, and boom, right into us. We're way off the side of the road. Like, I was like, okay, I don't want this to happen. Oh, and man. Yeah, it totaled my Civic hatchback. Oh. Like, my seat broke. Quack. You know, like, oh, that's, yeah, my back yeah, that's is, bad. That's I'm a big ruined. Hit. I, yeah. You got your permanent injuries I mean, I, I, it feels like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm working on it to try to, like. We got a great, great back. We both have oh, really? serious back problems. I have an amazing doctor. I'll <laughs> yeah. give you a recommendation. Yeah, please do. Please do. <laughs> yeah. like, we got the PT. So, we got the doctors. We got everything. Matt and I are in the accidental fellowship <laughs> we're, program we're at this point. Like, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got my fair share of crashes, so mm. I need to join that club. Yeah. Um, I got a fucking wing named after me at the <laughs> hospital. After, I'm, I've had the that, same back surgery twice. Wow. Yeah, I'm fucked. Yeah, so. You know, I when that's I was bad. younger, if it cracks your seat. That's bad. Yeah, it yeah. smashed the seat. I yeah. I was in the back seat. Yeah, like, pretty much the whole. It looked like a ruffles chip oh. the car. Yeah. Um, 
But and when I was younger, you know, you could work through the stuff. But I'm not young <laughs> yeah, you anymore. You walked that right off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like it's caught up to me. You was know, she not, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, she was fine. Okay. Yeah, um, but. Uh, that sucks. Yeah. Now you're like, now we have no car. You were at the scene of her car yes. accident. Yeah. Oh my God, that Dude, sucks balls. It's, it's crazy. That's a twofer. <laughs> yeah, but everything in life happens for a reason. Yeah. Because I, at the day I got my insurance check for that, my friend is driving me home from work and there's this white, this is championship white. It was painted championship mm-hmm. white, Mazda RX-7 FC, um, GTU, so it had the the bigger brakes, the S5 tails. That's tail, the good the one, right? Yeah. The GTU was the good well, one. Well, the Turbo 2, it's, it's the Turbo 2. I forget two. the trims of those. Yeah, so it's Turbo 2 and then GTU. Okay, yeah. And it's basically everything but the Turbo. Oh, all right, yeah. yeah. Um, turbo motor. But um, I could be wrong, but it's something like that. But it had the aero mirrors, S5 tail lights upgraded. It was a beautiful car. I was like... Sold. Yeah. So literally the day I got my insurance check, just dumped it on an RX-7, paid way too much for it at the time. I don't remember what, but I just remember later thinking, oh, man, I think I got ripped off. <laughs> you know? but, I should have shopped around yeah. a little <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, the crazy part about this place, it was a used car dealership, and behind it was a rotary shop called Fuego Racing. Fuego yeah, Racing! The yeah. Puerto Ricans Dude, are at it, it again, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. And the guy, who, the guy who built his motors, his name was Mickey. Bro, I'd yeah. love to fucking be like, who built Built the shit, Fuego. Yeah, Fuego seriously. Racing, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought that car, and that was. Is that the car you have now? Still? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. <laughs> You've been there a few since yeah. then. So he was driving in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Might have done some burnouts. I don't oh, know. Didn't man. know much about tires. I, I fully dipshitted that car too. Eventually. Really? After after I enjoyed it for quite some time, but um, yeah, I got that car, and that's how I discovered uh, like oh, rear wheel drive is fun. Yeah. You're doing a U-turn. You pop the clutch a little bit. It skirts out. You yeah. know. And I was like, okay, this is cool. You know. And then it just like I went to an RX-7 meet, and that's where I met this guy Chris. And you know, he was really nice. He was like, hey, yeah, cool. He had an RX-7, obviously, at this meet. It was a Dino Day or something where I was just hanging out. And he's like, yo, me and my friends. Uh, RX-7 Dino Day is called fucking Air of Disappointment. <laughs> It also I'm brings kidding. in a lot of wasps, I think. Yeah. It's just it's based on sound. The lawnmower community comes yeah, yeah. Hey, we, we hanging out. What's going on? Um, Is that the new John Deere? Oh, sorry, yeah. RX-7 uh, meet again. Oh, you guys again. <laughs> We're mean, but RX-7s are cool. Yeah, no, I, lo- I love RX-7. You know, just yesterday, I, so I drove my FD to, to Hoonigan, just, you know, I'm trying to put some miles on it, get it, get my head in the game for, like, finishing that car. And my friend's girlfriend goes, why does it? She never heard a rotary before. <laughs> why does it sound like it's farting? I was like, Are you that means it's working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I get this FC, go to this meet this guy at this car meet, and um, he takes me to. He tells me like, this is something that lives with me forever because it just feels like movie esque. You know, he's like, yo, my friends, uh, we're going to the secret spot. Secret spot. Yeah, we're going to the secret spot. We're gonna go. You know slide around the secret spot you want to mm. go and I was like okay yeah sure yeah. You know, I'm, I'm young and stupid let's go do stupid stuff and th- I'm sorry to tangent but it's crazy to me what kids are doing these days like stupid stuff these days well they like, have you the, can share it on the internet yeah, now it's a yeah. whole other story well just the level like you're willing to go like no fear of cops or anything mm-hmm. yeah. like the, what the people are doing is crazy to me yeah. cause like yeah. Anyway, you uh, were at an actual secret spot, right? And like, you're like, this shit's all gonna fucking. Yeah. Right. No one knows you're there. They're gonna fast and furious storm in, right? <laughs> yeah. You know? And it's like, no, that was that was me too. Like, yeah. it would be like I was from New York, and it would be snowing, yeah. and I'd be at some giant lot of a closed department store, sliding in the snow, and nobody gave a fuck. Right. No one could even see me. Right. And you, but like, I'd be like, they're gonna arrest me for it, this. And yeah. Like, now it's like take over downtown <laughs> intersection. Let's find the biggest intersection in the city <laughs> and destroy We're it. We're going to the Capital yeah. in DC. Yeah. But I Dude, think, the I Sixth think... Street Bridge is closed right now. I didn't even, do I didn't even get to see it. Dude, the, like, dirt, the dirt bags straight up won. Yeah. They won just, on the Sixth Street yeah, Bridge. The crazy. cops are like, yeah, no, you, can't, you can't have nice things. It's anymore. crazy, man. It's crazy. So, it's, so you know, I, I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go to the secret spot. 
and so I follow them there. They, it's called the Sandlot mm-hmm. because it, it's got just like a light dusting of, of dust over the it's concrete. Like it's made for right. fucking you guys. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so these dudes are all drifting A86, S13, MR2, just like, you know, yeah. the cars. And um, they're like, before you uh, can do this with us, you got to do donuts around that cone until we see that you're good enough. You know? Wow, that's very that's like actually yeah. like responsible. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. like we're not just gonna let some dipshit come need, in. And, you need to audition at the yeah, sand lot. Seriously, <laughs> and I don't know. I'm I'm I feel pretty old now, and like my memories are pretty vague. But like these these things, I've I've held on to. You yeah, know? and uh, or at least I've told this story enough where I convinced myself it happened sure. just like that. But <laughs> same thing. Yeah. Right. Um, but that's how I got into drifting. Wow! Yeah. How long did it take you to get to, uh, you know, nail the cone exercise for the like, um, first time? Or? No, I mean, I within that time frame, okay. I think. But um, I still had a lot to learn. Like the cone thing was just like a good warm up. I was well. That's like, how they start drift school. I mean, literally, yeah. if you go to drift school, yeah. that's like the first thing you yeah, have to do it, there. It, it teaches you a lot. Yeah. 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 Did any of those sandlot fools become like? professional drivers or uh, anything? Yeah. Well, Chris. Really? Was, yeah, is yeah. Chris Forbes? No, no, no. Okay. no, no it wasn't Chris Forbes. Okay. Uh, we came from a different region. Chris, I looked up to Chris, like, coming up. Yeah. Um, it's like, because, you know, as I was chasing my my video adventures, making videos and stuff, I had a blog, and I gave Chris a sticker, and he put it on his Formula Drift car, and that just, like, blew my mind. Like, I was I'm yeah, successful. Now. Yeah, yeah, you know, it like, yeah. inspired me to do a lot of stuff, but, like, um, yeah, from the donut part to so Kevin Lawrence, uh-huh. um, he was one of the Sandlot okay. guys, and he went on to become a Formula yeah, Drift yeah. driver, and um, and I'm now driving the competition car that he used to drive. Oh wow, because he, cool. he's taking a break from competition driving and stuff. So I'm like, oh, big shoes to fill. This is gonna suck. But uh, <laughs> um, it's but funny yeah. how many of those competition cars stick around. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, new 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 vinyl, right. same fucking car. They just sit there. You know, yeah. it's like we built this thing. Yeah. Otherwise, that, what that, are you gonna do with that it? That thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he went on to become a professional driver. He was always good. Yeah. Like, he could drive anything. He was, we used to call him Showstopper, like, back in the day. Oh, that's he, a cool nickname. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, if someone he, called me fucking Showstopper, well, I'd be like, I'd put that on a fucking t shirt. Well, he would go to a drift event with a stock Corolla A86. Oh, and, and the strip full. Dude, yeah. just destroy it. Like, yeah. it been, like, fully leaning, about to roll over. <laughs> just, like, it was the craziest thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he, he went on to become a pro driver, which is. Which completes the movie mm-hmm. story, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but they taught me how to clutch kick. They, you know, taught me a lot of stuff. And uh, and yeah, that's that's, that's how cool the as beginning fuck. of the yeah. drift journey. And then you were like, I can make videos of this. Yeah, eventually. Well, so the video thing happened because like I, my license got suspended from just being an idiot, you know. And so I'm like, well, you know, I sold my drift car. I was, I was like, I still love drifting. I've like was fully like at that. At the point where I lost my license, I had a couple different cars already. I went through a couple different phases, but I lived my life for drifting. Everything I did was so that I could go drifting. Mm-hmm. Like every dollar that I made was so that I could go drifting. It just gave me a feeling of liberation. Yeah. Like when I start, once you do it, it's fun as fuck. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's like it's, totally it's, different from like setting a lap time or anything like that. It's yeah, way well, more fun. I, I never really did. Like I actually. I went to Button Willow recently. That was my first time. At, at, a, at an actual, like, track day? We, yeah, it wasn't a track. We rented it for a video that oh, we were yeah. doing. And we have that C8 Corvette. Oh, the, yeah. The Mobile One C8 Corvette. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I was like, oh, I guess, and then what, you know, I should go try this grip racing thing out. Shit's wild. It's hard. It's, it's yeah, a different, yeah, sk- it's it's a different, different. skill, yeah, isn't 100%. it? Yeah, one hundred percent. But if you get good at drifting first, it's easier to go yeah, back I, I, to grip than it is to. For sure, I had I had no issues like yeah. pushing the car. Yeah, yeah. You know? If you're comfortable but, when but it's there's, here, there's still a lot to to take in when yeah. you're doing that kind of stuff. Learning the track is like the one of the biggest pieces. But drifting, like, I have to know more than three corners. Oh <laughs> yeah. shit! <laughs> well, when I'm drifting, I can go on a new track and read it. Yeah. Mid mid drift. Uh huh. Like, that's a different. You know, setting yourself up for. You know, sideways attacks is is easy for me, but like 
high speed, mm-hmm. 120 mile an hour chicane, you know, apex, all that. Different type uh, of commitment. Yeah, it's way yeah. different. Because you can really, is fun though. You can really fuck some shit up. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> and, it's fun, and you. It's a good place to learn because you can see. Yeah. You know, there aren't the, other than the little fucking that bullshit overcrest. mountain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, if they call it Phil Hill, yeah. that's the only one. Um, where you can't see, and yeah. but it's still pretty once easy you learn to the learn line. it. Yeah, once you learn the line. Yeah, but there's some tracks, like if you ever go up to Thunder Hill, Thunder I've Hill has there. like, yeah, like yeah. seven blind corners. Shit's yeah, and it's it's very challenging. Such a wild course. Yeah, it's cool. Um, but it's but it but it becomes a challenge to, to yeah. learn. Or like Road America That's or Road America. simulators come into play. Yeah, True. Honestly. True. Simulators are game changing. Yeah. Um. So. So you got a, you sold cars because you had, you sold your car because you had no yeah, license. Yeah. And got a video camera. So I bet I bet no I never I've never owned a video camera. Fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. Um, now there's a whole other story there. Yeah. So basically, like I live my life like I just drifting did something for me and it liberated me in a way and like my father he passed away when I was 13 and you know when you're a child you don't really deal with trauma and you get older and then you know even now it's still like unboxing Mm -hmm. you know childhood trauma and um drifting just did something for me yeah where it just like freed my spirit yeah you know and so i just i have a book you should read we're gonna talk talk about it later but but there's a people who seek uh and i include myself on this by the way Mm -hmm. um adrenaline activities yeah. that that are not just adrenaline activities but that require you to focus on the task at yeah. hand skiing motorcycling racing cars yeah. specifically as a way to shut off an overactive mm-hmm. mind mm-hmm. uh is a very it's I, it, I can relate to that 100 percent. yeah and i i absolutely makes totally sense but i have a book I want i'm to interested read. yeah yeah i'm interested yeah. um say so yeah, drifting kind of just took me mm-hmm. you know it's like i tried it i loved it it gave me a feeling that i never have thought of it like that but that focus yeah. literally shuts everything yeah. off and like it's i need to be you. present right yeah. now because yeah. if i'm not i die yeah it's <laughs> so it's interesting yeah. to hear you say that yeah that makes so much sense to to the feeling mm-hmm. um and so yeah i lost my license sold my car um, I skipped a bunch of cars there, then just two forties and bullshit, whatever, you know. All right, I'll, I'll do it quick. My the RX seven that I bought with that insurance money, eventually turbo swapped it, and then eventually wrapped it around a tree. Yeah, and Rain, uh, tires. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, straight up dipshit. Oh, um, yeah, like lifting around a corner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The lesson I learned. The lesson never each done, time. I've never done that again. Lesson each time. Expensive yeah. lesson. Could but, have been a Porsche. I mean, yeah. it could have been. You know, you could. <laughs> So so yeah, did that. Bought another RX-7. Swapped my turbo stuff into that uh-huh. one, and then eventually blew that motor. Sold that car, or traded that car for a 240. Enjoyed a 240, and that 240 really honed my driving skills in, because like I never really set up my RX-7 properly. Um, I didn't have the knowledge to, and I didn't listen to anyone. I was just like, you know, nah, I'm good at this. I, yeah. you know, I figured out. You know, I, I still have that Turns mentality. Out you could have made it easier on yourself. Could have, right? yeah, 100. Yeah. percent You yeah. know, and it's I don't like to blame the car. I just blame myself. Mm-hmm. It's just the thing that I do. And um, that's why you wouldn't be a very good race car driver. Yeah. Most of them. <laughs> Your car sucks. Yeah, <laughs> they, tur- they turn a bad lap. They're like something's wrong with the car. Yeah, the sure. yeah. I'm, I mean, as you develop as a driver and become more confident you definitely feel some stuff and you can address that but i try like i don't know it's just something i do but got in the 240 honed in my skills and then got into a, a s14 with an sr did a lot more driving and then everything came crashing down just made some mistakes lost my license and uh so i sold the cars and i just had to focus on living you know because i couldn't drive and I needed to take a step back, you know, because I was spending all my money drifting yeah. because it gave me a feeling that I can't explain and I just needed it to thrive, mm-hmm. you know. And so I was like, all right, well, I can't drift now. You know, I had to sell stuff. I had to get my life in order, get my money right. I just started working at Juker Racing and all my friends still drifted. Orlando had a very thriving drift scene and I just wanted to contribute to it be a part of it because mm-hmm. uh, i still love drifting so, so are you working as a wrench or were you working no as- uh well i started at njuku just like they weren't hiring you know recession happened a lot of things changed they had to like downsize their business for a while um and um they weren't hiring 
And so I was, just, I, was I needed a job. I didn't have my car, I didn't have my license. My friend worked there, so I could ride with him there. So I just started showing up and sweeping floors. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do this. Was this like a 2008 recession or 2000? Um, 2008, 2008 yeah, right? 2008, yeah. Yeah, because you would have been like 22. Mm -hmm, something like that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 2008, Yeah, because I worked there for four years-ish, four or five years, and I, then I came to Hoonigan in 2012, 2013. So yeah, 2008. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they had just downsized majorly, rebuilding their company, not hiring, and I just forced my way in, you know, sweeping floors. Oh, they got a new product to test on their company car. I would, you know, put it on, whatever. Um, yeah, and eventually they needed a salesperson to, you know, sell stuff, and I kind of slid into that you role. You were there. Yeah, right, exactly. So I slid into that role and just, you know, worked there and ended up, Having That's a cool. pretty solid yeah. um, sales career there, you know? Being um, there when people need stuff, yeah, good idea. Yeah. And I wanted to be in the industry. Like, I had done a couple of auto automotive jobs. I worked at BC Racing for a little bit, and then I worked, or before BC Racing, I worked at uh, just this Z shop. It was called Performance Factory. They mm -hmm. just built uh, 350Zs, G35s. Mm -hmm. I didn't make any money there. And... Um, I, and then you know went to BC and then went to I might have that out of order but eventually got to Injuke Racing and they're pretty well known today they, yeah they do, they I do, mean they've been they doing do time it since, attack cars they do drift cars they, they do a bunch of shit they've been doing it since 1999 oh yeah started in his garage and like it's literally is, I went, it, all, is it all Nissans they do all no Nissans they do, do everything yeah they do everything yeah. performance parts for everything they don't build customer cars uh -huh. they just sell uh, performance uh -huh. parts and develop stuff and um, but 1999, and then I went there. You know, I left in 2013, and I went. Back, I've been going back to drive their R32 Skyline, and they have like 30, 40 employees there. Yeah. It's like crazy to see like how they've you know redeveloped and mm -hmm. regrew into the wonderful. Um, now you have R32 Skyline. Don't you? Yeah, 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 dude, it's sick. It's, it's cool. Isn't it's it? so cool. Aren't have. they great? Yeah, uh, my yeah, it's. Just such a cool car. I can't. And like you had other car, like you had like U.S. market Nissans of that time period. Yep. Like how much better is the shit they it's, were getting in Japan? Like, yeah, I know, dude. Like, it's insane that that car never made it here. Yeah. Like I've had every. It doesn't make sense. To I've me. literally owned every dope Did car they? from the late '80s. Yeah. And the Skyline is by far the best car it's, globally it's so cool that you could buy at that time why didn't we get it i like, don't know do they just have beef with us like, i don't yeah i don't like, know no, you don't get this one like you could probably they could probably could have made a lot of money yeah. selling them shits here yeah. like um, especially compared to like developing the 300 zx or right. whatever just like, give us this fucking yeah thing. they gave us the 300 zx skylines, skylines are skylines. awesome yeah yeah it's a really fun car yeah it's a really fun car to drive um uh, I got, you know, I didn't buy a, a super nice Skyline, you know, but I got that car and then I shipped it off to Tommy F. Yeah. And they oh, did so you it. still got it? No, 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 I got it oh, back. you did? Yeah, I didn't drive it today because of power steering. Uh, police doing something, but um, and that car is horrible. Fucking Tommy. Yeah, no, it wasn't him. No, it's not, it's, just kidding. I, no, Tommy's yeah. a homie. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, he told me. Yeah, no, he, Tommy's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, he knows yeah. what he's doing. He yeah, does know what 100 percent. You yeah. know, um, did he do his whole thing? On dude, you? the whole, whole like, shit. Well. Uh, I, I call it the um, the Obama special, you know, like the, you know, at, at uh, Roscoe's, uh, the, the Carol, the Obama special, yeah, you know, because yeah. like I didn't bring him. He usually people bring him really nice cars, yeah, and yeah. then he does really nicer things mm -hmm. to him. I brought him an okay car, and um, and he did what he could. But the engine bay is gorgeous. Yeah. The motor work is awesome. Yeah. Like, like they turned that car into a wonderful driving machine. Yeah, and I, you know, I've been dailying it. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah good for it's, you. it's been super fun to drive. Yeah, um, they're, just, they're so nice. Those just cars. the power steering pulley started acting up. I got to figure that out. But that car without power steering is horrid. <laughs> yeah, like I've never, I've driven plenty of cars with no power steering, uh, non depowered racks. You know, just like none, and it's fine. Yeah, this thing is a, it's a, it's a hog. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's got. Bigger engine than the RX-7s, plus Massive. it's all-wheel yeah. drive, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so, nose so, heavy. And, so I could yeah. do it, but I was like, I, I'll just... No. Yeah. I, I don't think Matt cares to see this. <laughs> you didn't even park yeah. in a fucking driveway. Yeah, I, was in the corner. I wasn't going to park my basic-ass, like, uh, daily car. What like, is your basic-ass daily it's car? It's not mine, actually. Oh. Um so I have a bunch of cars, and I just ruined. Is there them like all. a Hoonigan beater? Is it uh, no. a Honda Fit? Say it's no, 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 no. <laughs> it's 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 my lady's Toyota Corolla. Oh, all right, whatever. But 
so it's like I bought a Jay Z X100 for a daily, uh, slammed it, and then the tension rod bushings went bad. <laughs> so I can't even do I it. Saw, I saw that car. It's cool as fuck. Yeah. And then, but I, I, I figured you were going to do the hurt thing with well, it. I, but so, you, here's <laughs> the, the yeah. fact that you intended a daily and then went, I know. Well, no, no, let's no, no, remove no, no. trap. I didn't just, I wasn't, I was fine with it stock. Uh -huh. right? And then I got a flat tire. And I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to buy a new tire for this. I have wheels and tires. Mm -hmm. But if I put the wheels and tires on, I have to put the suspension on. Uh -huh. And, and then now I down. That down. is a very impressive slippery slope, yeah, I yeah. got to say. You're like, one I got a flat, flat tire. One I guess flat I need tire. to put full coil. <laughs> I, guess, <laughs> I guess we got to fucking slam this shit to the ground now. All right. Oh, man, new wiper blades got to yeah. engine swap it. Dude, I know how that works, though. I have been there. Yeah, you yeah. know, and then the, it turns out the tension rod bushings are shot, so... <laughs> I have to do some work to make yeah, my daily yeah. daily again. So I just was like, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to yeah. drive my Skyline. And that's been great for the last two months or whatever. And then this pulley just started acting up. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to drive my FDR 7 Just keep it rotating. And, yeah, and um, that one is a, build in, a work in progress. You know, it's breaking in. Yeah. The, it's got a built motor, single turbo, all that good jazz. Um, but there's, I've been having a slight issue with, like, a fuel system. I don't know if the tank or whatever is dirty. But it gets about 50 miles, and it starts kind of running a little funny, oh, you know, after you clean out the lines and the filters and everything. So Wait, sorry, is this Torx Dallin or different no, RX7? No, okay. it's a different RX7. Okay. Oh, this is the FD. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it needs, like, the Italian tune-up. Maybe you're not revving it high enough. <laughs> Maybe not, you know? Um, so, yeah, on my way home driving that uh, yesterday, it's, it started, I was like, is it... You know, it's not as, you know, and I was like, I'm not driving this one anymore either. <laughs> so I just took the Corolla. I yeah. was like, you know, you're like me. I got a bunch of cars. They're all in various just, states. Of, oh, man. Various Life states was much simpler you. when it was just the twerk style. Right. I just, it was just the twerk Just that and a bicycle. And yeah. Like, well, yeah. It was, it was good, you know? Yeah. But what? when you, when you can go, oh, I don't want to fix this now. I'll drive something else. That's a tough, that's a tough slippery slope. Because then right? it just spirals. And yes. you break everything you yeah. have and then you're left Then with you have thing. seven cars that uh, don't work. Man, I am, what's it, what they call it? First world problem. So I'm over here complaining about it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not complaining. It just is. It's just what yeah, happens. Yeah. Like, it's just what, it, what it does, and having like the, the like it's not about having nice or not nice cars like the same kind of shit can happen if yeah. you've got a nice or not or not nice cars For it's sure. like it's, there's no there's no end to it any <sighs> car that's more than like 15 years old let's say if it's like a car that people buy because they're passionate about cars, yeah. it's probably gonna have a liability issue. It doesn't sure. matter if it's ten oh, million dollars, yeah, thousand yeah, 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 yeah. dollars. Yeah, that's just the name of the game. Yeah, but. you should see what the fucking bills. We got a Porsche nine five nine in there. You should see what the bills look like for that fucking I, thing. I don't. I don't think I want. The to. battery died on it, and it was a. It was four hours of labor <laughs> <laughs> to change the battery. Yeah. Because you see, the weight distribution is very important, <laughs> so we put the battery in the optimum location for the weight distribution. Except when it dies, you have to disassemble half the car oh, to fucking yeah, get yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. So the battery is actually located in Germany, so if you fly <laughs> yeah. to Germany to change it's the battery. It's a special remote battery. <laughs> yeah. ship your car to Germany. All right, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. God so. help you, a battery dies in a McLaren. Battery dies in a McLaren, oh. Honestly, I don't know what if that's a What a fucking life. nightmare. Like, even if I get that kind of money, I don't know if that's a life I'll ever live. Like, those cars. Like It's tough. It's tough to, like, keep up with the Joneses that way. Yeah. Uh, Have you had a go in, a, in modern supercars? Cars. Uh, yeah, you were fucking ripping on uh, on the fucking uh, Huracan yeah, at SEMA. You yeah. were fucking beating the balls <laughs> off of that thing. Yeah, I've driven a couple. I think they're awesome. Yeah, I, like it's uh, Huracans are good because they're tough. Yeah. they take a. They actually. I mean, they, you want to talk about a car that takes a beating? Yeah. Huracan takes a beating. I, I've learned. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're good. Yeah, it's like I, I got no problem with the cars or anything. It's just not what makes me. It doesn't mm -hmm. hook you. Yeah, you know, and I don't know. Maybe that would change if I had a shit ton of money and could buy all this stuff. But. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you probably have five working R, R, you know, RX-7s yeah. first, and then you go, well, now do I need a McLaren? He just said five working RX-7s. Yes. <laughs> One working <laughs> RX-7 and four non-working RX-7s. <laughs> Um, no, if you if you consolidate it upwards, you could get no, into it. You could, yeah, if you, yeah. but but it's not your thing. I, I get it. No, yeah. And I'm not encouraging you to, but for you sure. probably you probably could if that's what you wanted. Especially because for you, it's a business expense. Right. It's a production. It's production budget. We'll, we'll see where life takes me. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm enjoying these shitty cars right now, and uh, 
I'm just gonna keep at it. But uh, your the, the Torque Stallion is like what you're, I guess, known for the most, and that car has been apart and back together how many fucking times? I mean, I've had it for since 2011. End of 2011 is when yeah. I got it. How many engines? Um, all right, so when I <laughs> so when I bought that car, so all right, so you know, I did my 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 car game. And then, so at one point, I had a first gen GS three hundred. I wish those are great. Yeah, you know the first gen. First gen. That's the that's the that's actually like the JDM car that they just brought over here. Yeah. So as a toy, what was the Toyota version of that? Car? Aristo. Aristo. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I had a first gen uh, GS three hundred. Um, I did an NAT conversion, so mm-hmm. they come with two Js, Yeah, you know? Uh, so I put a turbo on it, frontward facing manifold, single big turbo, all eBay stuff. Yeah. And- um, Did it work? Converted it to manual as oh, well. Wow. This is like 2011, 20. Was there know. ever a manual version of that car? No. Oh, so you had to do yeah. so, a bunch of shit. Yeah, so you just, you know, get a transmission. Um, just Supra stuff, right? Pretty yeah, much. Supra or uh, SC300. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, I I you know had this really cool first gen GS um, NAT. I didn't. I never got it tuned. Right. I didn't have it long enough. So I I finished it and I was daily driving this it car. It was raining. And no, 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 no. We, we, I learned the, I learned the rain thing. At this point, I could control the vehicle. Um, and uh, so I. Uh, I was daily driving this car. AC still worked. Everything worked. It was great. You know, I just never got it tuned. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I didn't, didn't have the money to buy a standalone and things like that. So I just, you know, it worked well enough. And um, if you build something like that and don't get it tuned, is it what just running wastegate pressure? Is that how it works? Yeah, like it was just, just wastegate pressure, and hopefully it's rich. You know, <laughs> 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 and which which it was. So you know, like you know, I could I couldn't just hammer the throttle. You know, I had to ease into it, and yeah. then halfway through, you could. It was sick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, when you first run a, a tur- car that was non-turbo, and now it's turbo, yeah. and you roll into it, you go, "Oh wow, I just made this thing so fucking yeah, fast." It yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Like that thing, I wish, I wish I took the time to like really get it out. I was going to, but I uh, the brake line was mounted above the downpipe. Like and, where this is going. I mean, that's where they're mounted. But I, 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 to make the kit work, you know, deleted ABS and had to make some uh, stainless steel lines. But I just mounted it kind of shitty, mm. you know. And the downpipe wasn't wrapped, and it melted the mount. The brake line fell on the downpipe, started a little fire. Oh so, shit! So it wasn't bad. I was, was wondering a, where yeah, you were going. Yeah, I was no, it wasn't if it was bad. Was going to be a fire, no, no, or no, if you just lost brakes it, and crashed? No, it was a fire. <laughs> didn't crash. I pulled into a Walgreens, my car's on fire in front of Walgreens, and I go inside, I'm like, yo, give me that fire extinguisher to the guy at the counter. They're like aisle five. They're like $37. No, 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 he literally looks at it and goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, my car is on fire outside, give me that fire extinguisher. He's like, no, I'm like, what, I'm like, what, what? are you? Yeah, so I I saw another one, went Get and grabbed it. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. No. Yeah, I'm like, what do you mean? You know, so I put it out. Oh my God. It was right around the corner from my house. <laughs> So I limped the car home, and um, and then I ended up just selling it to. I was just. I was I say not going to give. I'm still stuck on this fire extinguisher thing. Yeah. Someone goes, my shit is on fire. There is a fire extinguisher. Who yeah. says no? It's a Walgreens guy. What the fuck is he saving it for? It's not like it's like Dave Walgreens dude, behind the dude, counter it there. It's like corporate fucking it's bullshit. So weird. It was. That's so stupid. Yeah, my car is like about to burn down. Though. But <laughs> so I, you know, I pull it to, into the Walgreens. Like now you're gonna get <laughs> yeah, crash through the window real quick. Um, so you know, just I just I just have a nice track record of dipshittery and like, yeah, that happened. And it was about a month into having it turbo swapped and everything. And I really love that car as a dream to build something like mm-hmm. that. There was a Friends Racing Aristo. It was a second gen, but I just always loved. After seeing that video, I was like, I love GS300s. Mm-hmm. And my roommate had a second gen as well. And uh, The second gens were fucking cool. That's what I, I have now. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when they came out with that, even like when the V8 one too, and mm-hmm. it was like zero to 60 in five right? seconds for yeah. this fucking... They were fast as fuck cool, for man. 1999 They're or whatever cool. it was. They're super cool. That was like kind of peak Lexus. 
I love those cards. They're I've, built I've owned so a, I've well. I've a ton of them. Like, yeah. I, if I see a black on black GS300, I'm going to go lowball that You know that how hard they are to find? Yeah. yeah. They're really I, hard I to find. I don't even need it. I'm going to go lowball that guy because I just love those cards Yeah, so there's much. like, there's yeah. not a lot of them left. Yeah, yeah. They're great cars. Even like my, my mom had the first, the Gen 1 RX 300 and the Gen 1.5 when they got the Altezza lights. Yeah. And then when I was like young, I was like, what the fuck is this, mom? You didn't buy a Tahoe? Yeah, like, right. now I'm like, fuck, those great things cars. were built All, every, impeccably. Every single Lexus. The materials they're, they're, were so good. The leather was so yeah. nice. Like they're, they're they were the just best tight. Cars, yeah, they're the best cars. I like. I love them today. Yeah. Um, and uh, like just the other day, there was a GS three hundred silver black interior the front windshield was smashed out. I was thinking about leaving a note <laughs> on the car. <laughs> yeah, it was just part like it just, I uh, don't even give a fuck. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was, you know, black interior GS. I need it. Yeah. Um, I got a problem, but. Uh, yeah, so I ended up selling that first gen to a friend. I think I traded him for an FDR X7 um, with a clean title. Okay. Um, no motor, uh, lacking some interior. But I was like, all right. I Your shit didn't have a motor anymore either. Yeah, so right, right. <laughs> what? No, dude, he fixed it the same day. Oh, he did? Yeah, he fixed it the same day. He drove oh. the same day. I was like, damn it. <laughs> I was just upset. I was just upset, you know? Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> but but it worked out. Like I said, everything happens for a reason. So I got this FDR X7, ended up selling it to one of my customers at Njuka Racing. Like, he didn't even live in the state. He was just one of my really good phone customers. He was like, I'll buy that thing. And so he bought that. I bought a Crown Vic because I'm like, you know what? Screw this. It's daily time. Yeah. You know? I was like, I've been struggling for a while. Let me get my ground set with a daily. My friend from Atlanta had a police interceptor, really clean. Bought that for twelve hundred bucks. Nice. And um, and daily drove that for a while, and then I did a neutral bomb and exploded the diff. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number one: Don't dirt bag the daily. Yeah, yeah. I drove it for use it a little bit. I drove but. it for a while. I drove it for a while. Now you were made for the job I, you had. Yeah. You, you started. Yeah. You started practicing That's what I'm saying. so it's, long it's, ago. It's just. You know, I'm, yeah. It would be very funny if everyone at Hoonigan had to actually write their Hoonigan, like their History. resume. Yeah. I bet it would be a hysterical, yeah. like, reading of, of everybody's. It's, yeah, it's, you're fucking quality. You're pre qualified. I've, I've skipped a couple things, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but. Uh, I feel like you met Scott and you're like, I have this word I've been throwing around called Hoonigan. And he's like, that's a good idea. <laughs> no, I, I didn't come up with the name or anything like that. I'm just, a, 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 I've just been that, part of the yeah, movement. Yeah, that's hilarious. But um, you're like, I haven't just killed seven sports cars, <laughs> I've killed four dailies. <laughs> this is amazing. No one can kill a Crown Vic, but dude, yeah, dude. even this, even the fucking Orlando PD couldn't kill dude. this car, and here we are. <laughs> so, you know that happens, and then I have another friend. He, this, so this guy, an old friend of mine, before like he was a an early part of my car stuff, right? You know, car meets. I met him at a car meet. He came from a different state. He had a V8 RX-7. It was fast as hell. He became a part of my friend circle. And, like, I just always loved that car. Obviously, I had RX-7s. I never experienced a V8 one. This thing made, like, 700 horsepower. Yeah. Just big V8 spray. Just, like, stock suspension. So it just went, <laughs> whack. You know? It was, it was disgusting. You know? And um, years go by. That's a he, Florida car. He moves on to, like, Corvettes and stuff. Um, takes the I think he's on a bearing or something takes the heads off puts them on his Corvette parks the RX-7 under a tree and uh, I make a Facebook post about selling this Crown Vic and he's like yo I'll take that thing you know I, just, I guess he had a diff or he, easy swap you know um, so I traded him my Crown Vic for his V8 RX-7 and it it didn't have like the motor was blown but yeah. it had everything else a wiring uh, transmission, motor mounts. For a V8. For a V8, yeah. all of it. So I traded them for the Crown Vic. I got this thing, went to LKQ, got a 5.3 liter. Nice. And, and swapped it in the car. And nice. That, and that was the birth of the Twerk style. Oh, oh really? That's yeah. what I, Okay. That, yeah. So that thing was pretty fucking yes. ratted out before you even... Before you it was even really, had it, it was a really clean car. It was, yeah, it was oh, a really okay. clean car. Um, like super clean interior, clean exterior. A little bit faded from being out in the sun for yeah. a couple of years, but like just had Whatever. stock. Like it was just stock suspension, so it was like 
you know, that was drag racing stuff. Yeah. I don't know. They like that. Yeah. The big squat. So the car was great. It was in it's great condition. It's funny that he swapped a V8 into RX-7 and then went to a Corvette because when I drove, I've driven V8 swapped FC and FD RX-7s. Yeah. And in both cases, I basically was like, oh, this is a Corvette. Yeah. Like it just, it turns well, the RX-7 into a Corvette. I don't know so if you might as well this. get one. I don't know if you noticed this, but people have stopped VA swapping their cars and they're just buying Corvettes now. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. instead of doing a Corvette swap, let me just buy yeah. a Corvette. Yeah. You know? Cause like, you end up, you'd end up in the same place the, anyway. The you might as well money, skip the middleman. Yeah. The amount of money and everything. It's just like, yeah. And Corvettes are turned out to be amazing drift cars. So. Yeah. I did a video where I drove like a super nice turbo FD RX-7 back to back with a LS3 swap rx7 and i owned a c5 corvette modded at the time and i got out of the ls one i was like um y you've you've built a corvette out of an rx7 yeah. like you might as well just yeah. have bought a fucking vet and yeah. it's like oh okay it's, yeah i don't know i mean it wasn't bad actually i mean it still it drove really nice and yeah. it was quick was set up well. it, was, it was really set yeah. up it wasn't over the top it had really good balance and everything but like it felt it might as well have been a vet. I mean, right. the distribution, the weight was like all kind of the same. Yeah. Like it just might as well have been better rear end because this was like Leaf Spring era. But right. but uh, yeah, and now people are drifting vets. People are drifting the fuck out of Corvettes. Why do, weren't they drifting vets earlier? Were they just? They were more money. Yeah, yeah. They're more money, so they're they're not like I wouldn't call them cheap, but you can find deals. Yeah, you can find pretty good cars for you know, and then you just have to put suspension and angle on them. Yeah. Whereas you have to buy a 240 for 10 grand now, buy a motor for five grand, yeah. buy a swap kit for five grand, buy. That's the thing is all the quote cheap drift cars got expensive because yeah. it's so popular. So it's just like, we'll just skip all yeah. of that. And, yeah. buy. and Corvettes, they're cool. You know, they look yeah. cool. So, so yeah, um, that's how I got Torstein, which was, I guess, how we got here was your original question. No, I how, said how many, how many motors? motors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so started off for me as a V8 car. Yeah, yeah. And the first V8 lasted a good three years. It was a great run with that one. And then, like, I turboed it. And the 5.3 is like a truck motor, basically, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, they're cheap, 500 bucks at the time. Yeah. Um, I think they're like 1,200 now or something. Still, Still pretty cheap. Pretty cheap. It might be more. I Don't get me. Don't quote me. I well, they made that. a lot of them since, too. It's like, yeah. they're, they're out there. For sure. Um, so, turboed it, and that worked for a while, and then, like, my map sensor came out one day in the middle of a burnout, and I fried a piston, and then, like, from there, it was just kind of like a bad luck string of, mm -hmm. of motors, so I probably had, like, three different V8s in it, and then I went, uh, then I went back to rotary in that car, and had the rotary for two or three years, um, spun a bearing in that thing, and, uh, which is a thing. Yes. Was, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I got confused, but I didn't yeah. want to sound like an idiot. Yeah, but. yeah, they have bearings too, not traditional. Oh, in the, um, what's it called? For the in the rotor, essentially. Yeah, the shaft, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, spun a bearing in that thing, and I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, I'll just put a V8 back in it because, like, I've, I've been wanting to retire that car. So, what is it now? It's V8. Again. It's a V8 now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it a five three V8? No, it's a six two now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna probably make 800 horsepower. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm trying to retire the car. And That's not I, a good way to do it. And then I made some friends who build V8s, and they're like, yo, what is it? You can't retire that car, man. I it's, know. It's you know? it's Honestly, I've tried, and because like, I parked it yeah. after the rotary uh, you know, uh, went south. And I'm not going back to V8 because I don't like rotaries. I love rotaries. I just shifted my mantra to I don't want the same motor in any of my cars. Oh, so okay. my FD has a 13B. Yeah. So, I so you don't want different it. experience? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. cool. So none of my cars have the same motor. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll just put torque back to V8 because that's its former glory, and you know, done. Yeah. Um. So. So you said you wanna. You said you wanna have. You wanna. You're you're now at a phase where you're buying the cars that you either. Wanted as a kid and couldn't have, mm -hmm. or things that you had and ruined. Right. Uh, so what you got the skyline, which is pretty. That's pretty pretty pinnacle. Yeah, that that. that was an impulse. Like things just kind of. My friend has an import business and um, Oishi Imports, and like. Oh, I just met that guy yesterday. Oh, really? You saw he him was in the here Cosmo? with the Cosmo. Yeah, that thing was cool as yeah, fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, that's, what's that guy's name? Uh, Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, yeah, he was very nice. He yeah. was here. He came by yesterday. Yeah, uh, with this wild fucking Mazda Cosmo, he ju just fresh off the boat. That yeah, thing, he just got that thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it was really, really cool looking. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, and he was very, very nice. He's, super cool. Dude. Yeah, okay. Uh, I didn't realize it was the same guy. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So he imported he imported my R32. Cool. But basically, I was just like going through a phase. I was like, oh, you know, I got a little bit of money that I can relinquish into an asset, and uh, not a bad buy. Yeah, I you mean, know, and he and he kind of talked to me at the same time. I wanted a Mark IV Supra, mm-hmm. but those are ridiculous. And, and the R32 drives better. I, I So I always wanted an R32, but I didn't think I could get one for a reasonable mm-hmm. price. And I don't know why I thought the Mark IV I could get for a reasonable price, yeah. but I learned quickly that I couldn't. And then... The uh, right-hand j- drive ones were cheap for a minute, for sure. and now people don't it's care all, anymore. It's, it's all, all the same. Yeah. Yeah. But just see the know, one, see the Mark IV yeah. with fifty-three thousand miles on it, sold for two hundred and thirty thousand dollars on Bring yeah. a Trailer. Yeah, I'm never buying one of those cars ever. Like, no, I don't care if I'm rich. No. Like, <laughs> not happening. I'm not, and that you know, like even with Toyotas um, or, or old like sedans, like yeah. the JZX100, mm-hmm. they're thirty, forty grand. That's now. crazy. I'm like, I'm not paying that much yeah. money for this Toyota sedan, you know? Supers are nice, but it's that is not Yeah, so I, I've just kind of driving experience I've written, that I would spend to it. No, yeah. So should I buy a Ferrari or a <laughs> you know. put the dash wraps around you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I've written Supers off of my list. Um, I love them. I think they're cool. Yeah. Um, more of a just like a nostalgic collection piece, yeah. mm-hmm. but not for the price. And then he was like, "Well, I uh, I've got this skyline that's been sitting in this lot for a while that I could probably get for you for pretty cheap." <laughs> no uh, one who knows anything about skylines wants it, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. And um, and I was like, "Ah, oh, I didn't think about an R32 GTR." I was like, "It was one of my favorite cars in like Gran Turismo when I was growing up and yeah. stuff." And I was like, "Yeah, let's do it," you yeah. know. And so we went through the process. Had you ever driven one before? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Never driven one. I really? was like, oh, I just, so when you first drove that car, were you like, oh, fuck, this yeah, is well, fucking sick? Well, yes, it felt sick, but it wasn't 100%. Uh-huh. You know, the car needed some love. Um, yeah. Need some bushing, suspension, like it needed some love. But did you see the potential, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I get it, you know? Yeah. The, the way that the motor pulls stock was... Great. Really cool. I was yeah. like, wow, that, that feels nice. And I like old cars. You know, I like the nostalgic feel. And um, and then after the Tommy Effy, I think that car is just, I yeah. could drive it all day, every day. I love I, I just love drove that, that Built by Legends joint. Oh, it's like man. 400 grand, but it's fucking fire. The Mines uh, yeah, collaboration Mines car? Yeah. Wow. It's so sick. Yeah. It weighs nothing. It weighs 2,880 pounds. That's crazy. And it just rips. I love I love Skyline so I love, much. I'd I, love I'm, to get another. It would have sucked to buy that car and hate it, but at the same time, I know I could sell it. Yeah, you know, you can always sell it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I wasn't really sweating it. It was like a little bit of an investment and an opportunity to own a car that I never thought sure. I'd be able to own. Yeah. So, um, more and they're a good time. Yeah. It's a safe investment. It's a good time. Yeah, but that wasn't on. You know, that wasn't a car. What's What's left on the radar? EG6. Oh, yeah. I got to get that one back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But those are starting to come now. <laughs> Yeah. Where do you find out what you got to pay for a fucking Civic hatch? <laughs> it's like, dude, those SIs, those like 2000 oh SIs, God. I mean, they're the electric those, blue or whatever. That was the shit when yeah. I was graduating from high school. Yeah. That my, was, you my you had one of those? One. That was the yeah. fucking tits. And now they are expensive as a motherfucker. I saw one in a parking garage the other day being driven by like a seven year old man. Yeah. It was dirty and he was over revving it as slipping the clutch. And oh, I saw no. I was like, that's an SI. And he went past, I saw the badge. It's like, but that poor car. Yo, my friend has bought one um, like two years ago for four grand. <gasps> really? Yeah. Wow. It's got like a little faded paint. Runs that's okay. Runs really? Like, it's had the cool like confetti style seats and mm-hmm. everything in it. <laughs> the yeah. confetti. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was just like, what? God damn, those four things grand. are fun I, as fuck. I, I was like, yo, I'll buy this from you. And yeah. And he's like, no way. Yeah. And he's like, there's a couple other for, they're cheap. Like, really? Yeah. Where this, I gotta look? You might want to look into it. I don't know if they're still cheap, but. The really, the, cl- the stock. Low mile. You want to find one like a less than fifty thousand miles stock. It's thirty five grand. Yeah, nothing. They're expensive. Yeah, we have different shopping criteria yeah, than <laughs> Matt's no, smart. I, I mean, I'm trying Matt, to buy a right. collector's item. I know, you know you're what smart. I'm yeah. Nah, I, I don't need another project. I, I, like I already buying. got seven fucking projects. <laughs> I like buying on the edge. So that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that I can smash it. Yeah, you know? like and not intentionally just like ah, fuck this thing. And just no, like, but I like, want to be able to if like the shit goes down. Like if I paid know. fifty, sixty grand for a skyline and then took it to Tommy F. Yeah and got his treatment and then have a eighty thousand dollars skyline and I'm not gonna be able to be myself. I understand. You know, I completely understand. So I have that E forty six M three in there that's literally like too nice. Yeah. 
and I love it. It's cool. It was a, probably a wise investment. But you get in it, and you're like, dude, I I wash my hands before I get in it. That's that. I've never heard anyone say that. I literally life. wash my hands before <laughs> I get in the car. You don't wash your hands before you touch your dick, but you wash your right. hands before you. <laughs> yeah, my dick is worth not nearly as much money as the and fucking. And it's more resilient. And probably. it's much more resilient. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, isn't it stupid? It's oh, very dumb. Oh man. And I have other cars that are work quote worth more. I don't that, wash my it hands because it like, it's too clean. That one just feels like yeah. special. I might have to drive it today. I need to drive. Yeah, it. I don't I have, have any, today. I don't have anything but special. That's probably for the best. Yeah, probably I mean, for the best. I just I'm not a if collector. If you if you had to be your your if your personality, I'm my personality, I'm a bitch about my own cars, and everyone knows it. Yeah. If you all of a sudden had to be a bitch about a car, it would yeah. be anti hurt. Yeah, I've I've I don't know. I just like I found the passion for driving cars, and I think I love driving cars than I love mm-hmm. more than I love cars. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to think I was a car guy. That's what they say about Ken. Really? Yeah. yeah. Ken doesn't really like cars that much. He just yeah. likes going real fucking fast Dude, and beating the shit out of stuff. You know, I used to think I was a car guy. I used to have a lot of useless knowledge about a lot of cars that I don't matter to mm. me uh, from video games or just magazines or videos and stuff. And then, like, I really, I got really focused on just driving, and I kind of forgot a lot of it, and I don't care to learn a lot of it again. You <laughs> yeah. know, like, I used to know the difference between Porsches and all this stuff. I don't know any of it now, you know? So it's like I, I had this thought. I was like, I don't know if I'm actually a car guy. I think I just like You're a driving. driving. Guy. Yeah, That's fine. I just I yeah. really enjoy driving. I love RX-7s. Yeah. I love my GS300. I love A86s. I love those cars. So you could maybe consider me a, that kind of car guy. Mm-hmm. But like a general broad statement car guy, I don't know if I'm, I'm yeah. that. You know? I it's just, all right. We all have our yeah. areas. Yeah. Uh, Zach, do we have anything off the Patreon? We got a, lot, a bunch of questions on the fucking Patreon for Hurt. Uh, of course, if you want to talk to our guests virtually through the show, patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. You can also get a ad free listening experience. No commercials for you, my friend. Uh, you can also uh, get the show the day it goes up and not have to wait till Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Jake says, uh, what kind of advice or words of wisdom do you have for today's upcoming generation of drift driving enthusiasts? Oh, uh, guess what? You're a thought leader now, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, what kind of advice? That Road and Track advice? article fucking said you were a thought leader. It's a good article. <laughs> it was. It's it a was, good article. It, it, was nice. an, it was an honor. Yeah, it's cool. Like waking up and seeing that headline. Like, you know, it said the most important uh, car person is black or whatever. Yeah, right? it was and good. The, and there was a lot of people who was like, oh, why is you got why you got to say black? Whatever. We can talk about that another time. But like, I don't think I'm the most important person by any means I just want to lay that out there but <laughs> it's, that's why uh, you don't say it about yourself y- yeah, someone else has got but, to say that but shit but people read that and they're like fuck you dude you know <laughs> and I'm like I'm like I didn't say it you know I, I obviously well, I think your attitude towards cars it is is inspiring to other people's at you know what other people could aspire to be drive shit yeah. make it fun yeah. you know all no, that I, stuff. I, I understand and I'm stoked that I'm in a position where I can inspire people to to want to do cars, you yeah. know, like it's it feels really special when someone comes up to you and say, "Only reason I do this is because of this video, yeah, or that, or this," you know, like it's that's, that's cool. That's forever, you yeah. know. Um, so now that you're the most important influencer in the car world, who <laughs> happens to be black, um, words of wisdom. I mean, don't do it if you don't love it. If you don't make much money. Yeah, if you don't love it, yeah, exactly. You, it's like if you're in it because you want to make money or you have some some other motive, like I mean you can do it. I'm not, you know, it's your money, but like I suggest being yourself truly and doing it because you love it and if you don't love it, pivot to whatever you love, mm-hmm. you know. So just the best piece of advice I can give you is to follow your heart and like if you are having issues feeling like you're not uh, connecting or getting exposure, then you just need to you need to be active. Mm-hmm. Go to all your local events. Um, the best thing that ever happened to me was for me was when I started going out of state to drift. Mm. So save your money. Like if you can, if you if you have to choose between like twenty events a year in your state or ten events and one out of state event, I would do 10 events and one out of state oh, event. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, just because like the experience of going to a different um, 
part of the country experiencing their version of drift culture or card culture mm. and networking and meeting those people and building friendships you know that's a but, good one yeah that that is i think important yeah um, it's like because it, it, it's not easy you know we're obviously older and at a different point in life on social media than other people. Yeah. So like we we were like think about this. There are people who were super famous for us and aren't famous on social media right, now. Right. 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 You know, because that that wave skipped them. Like they they were out and social media happened and like, which is crazy. You know. But yeah, Robert Redford has a weak Instagram. <laughs> 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 no, I know what you mean. There are people who I find on social media. I'm like, I have more followers than this super famous it's, person. It's, How does that fucking it's happen? It's insane. Yeah. You know, like mus- a lot, especially like musicians from like the, past. the 90s. Yep, totally. Yeah, I was like, what? and it's like there's no reason you should. Why have do I more have more eight? Instagram followers exactly. than the fucking singer of this fucking huge the, band? They sold 100 million copies. <laughs> yeah. And you have, yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's such a crazy concept. Social media has really changed. Like social media and YouTube and so but also so, social media is not a substitute for being places in real life no 100% and you know and like people make pretty harsh judgments on somebody mm-hmm. just based on what they see in their feed and they mm-hmm. don't know anything about the actual person you know totally um, but in this industry and stuff social media kind of plays a big role in, yeah for sure in, you know depending on where you want to do where you want to go or how you want to do it you know so be authentic like, on social media yeah be authentic <laughs> Everything, yeah. Uh, Chris Navio, uh, Hurt, what are your thoughts on tuning new cars for drifting like the Supra compared to older cars that are more common? Um, I mean, That's going to be expensive if you fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, new cars, I think, are great. I've seen, I, I haven't really seen the Mark V Supra do it much other than like, you know. Like in, F, in FD. Like yeah, in you know. Drift with like a team. Right, but. I think they're releasing a manual version they are, soon. This year. So that yeah. might change uh, that vibe. Um, I'm into it. Um, I see new BMWs, uh, Supras. I know the 400Z is going to drift a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the FRS BRZ, that, that community is pretty huge. Those cars are actually really cool. Good, yeah. Good drivers. So I'm into new cars getting modded for drifting because that helps keep the sport mm-hmm. going. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it helps it thrive um, yeah. so I'm fully into it I'm not saying you shouldn't get old cars and do it too um, but it's all about what you like you know and what you can afford right that too uh, Joshua Lampson says looking back at your time at Hoonigan what was the first moment you realized it was really starting to blow up um, the first time I realized this was starting to blow up maybe I think I was sort of uh, traveling places and seeing people wearing the merch um well, the you know, so the merch thing doesn't surprise me just because I'm at car events. Yeah. You know, it's like being at a car place and getting noticed or being at a car place and seeing something that you worked on is, is it's just par for the course, right? But like being at a grocery store mm-hmm. and someone's like Yeah. You know, and you're not prepared for that. You know, you're in pajamas uh, <laughs> looking like dog shit. Yeah. Like, oh, no, not me. No, no. Yeah. But you know, that's when I was in normal super normal places and people were recognizing me. That's when I was like, oh shit, this is happening. Yeah. Like YouTube is That's a fun feeling, is isn't real. it? Yeah, yeah, you know, I like, I've I've been doing this stuff for a long time and um, I don't know, it's, it never gets old. Um, it's just like a, it's just really cool to know that you're impacting people mm-hmm. in a positive way, so. Uh, Miguel Flores, are we gonna see any more Hoonicorn on this versus that? That's a good question. I'd, Sounds I'd, like a Ken question. Yeah, I don't have yeah. any inside info on, on you for that. I haven't heard anything about Hoonicorn um, coming down the pipeline, but there's always a chance because that car exists. The rumor so, I heard was that they had, they had felt they had kind of exhausted it for the time being. It, it was, you know, and we... It was, a, it was a pretty known quantity, and they yeah. wanted to uh, branch out. Yeah, we, we kind of did that a lot. Joe says, uh, what's the longest you've gone without breaking a car you own? Define breaking. <laughs> where, where you couldn't drive it to a, uh, any You said you dailyed your Skyline for three months. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I long. mean, I could still drive it. It's not technically broken. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that car is... But you left it at home for a mechanical reason and drove a Corolla here instead. Yes. So, yes. 
I'll go get it right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna uh, fucking prove it. To yeah. You. yeah. Um, <laughs> the longest I've gone. I mean, Twerk Stallion had a really good run. I'm telling you, like. I don't know. That's a that's a loaded question. I'm sorry I can't fully answer it. I break shit. Okay. So. Uh, Derek says, uh, for Hurt, my friend owns the diesel BMW Ford mashup that you guys toasted the tires on a few weeks ago. Do you know what he's talking about? Yeah, I know what he's talking about, but I wasn't there. Okay. How would you rate this build versus some of the other creations you see on a regular basis? So I, I wasn't there, but I watched the video, and I I love the concept of that people What was doing. the car? It was like, a, it was basically a diesel... 335 yeah. thing with an old like 50s car on top of it oh. essentially oh, that's kind of cool yeah yeah I mean I could have that wrong but that was the concept oh, yeah. you know interior I've seen a few of those that yeah, are real cool people were really like like LS 400s mm -hmm. people were just taking the body off of those and putting oh, neat. yeah my friend Jake put like a 55 or something some old ass oh cool like, I drove a car that was a Volvo Amazon like a, from the 50s with an Evo underneath it yeah, that's I crazy. saw a guy who did one something like that a 50 something Ford with a with a 2015 Mustang yeah. underneath so I, I love the concept yeah that's cool that. Yeah. that is cool um, uh, and what makes an ideal Hoonigan Burnyard video car um, cool passionate person and unique vehicle is pretty much the the key to that, and also the ability like, to actually do burnouts. Right, yeah. right. You know, uh, just, makes you sense. Just, yeah, if it's weird uh, and does burnouts, that's pretty honestly much. a lot of cars have come to the place where I don't think are cool, and then they do some wild ass shit, and then I fall in love with the car. Sure, you know that like, Bronco, yeah. whatever uh, wasn't it Bronco doing like the four wheel drive. Axis that thing is ridiculous. Like if that <laughs> yeah. showed up, you'd be like, "All right, it's like a lifted old yeah, truck." Yeah, and then it does some dumb shit, and you're what? like, "Hell yeah, yeah I love that yeah, thing. Yeah. I want one." You yeah. know, so that's the kind of car guy I am, I guess. Sure. Uh, David says, "If cars are designed after lifestyles, what lifestyle do you feel is least represented in the car market?" That, that's a really hard question. If cars are what? designed after lifestyles, um, what lifestyle well, doesn't have a representation? Uh, yeah. Uh, what lifestyle doesn't have? I don't. Uh, we'll come back to that one. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I feel like any interest in cars, any whatever niche market or group, like they have representation, whether or not they're in your field of view. Yeah. Meaning your, you know, person listening, like that's up to them. Like I don't see a lot of VIP stuff in my social media because I don't follow a lot of it. But it doesn't mean right. it's underrepresented. It just means you know, yeah. there's only so many things you can pay attention to. For me, to. drift is my lifestyle. And every car company ever uses drifting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This isn't a drift car, but check out this but commercial. Out this yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So the uh, uh, the the the, uh, the LAPD recently bl tried to blame the fucking shenanigans on the Sixth Street Bridge uh, on car commercials. Wow! Please stop showing this dangerous driving in car commercials. Wow! Like, bro, that's funny. Please, I know, yeah, right? It's Marilyn Manson's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, the least. I mean, what one thing I'm seeing is the shrinking offerings for affordable sports cars 100 percent. i mean there there used to be a lot more entry level yeah. rear wheel drive you know affordable sports cars and and we said we have more two to three hundred thousand dollar exotics than yeah. ever and we've got more fucking eggs than yeah. ever and not and no and even no, no. even your like I don't, the basic car now isn't so basic. Yeah. And, you know, 60,000 plus. Yeah. Uh, and everything is Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. And it's like, those are all expensive cars. Yeah. You know, and so seeing Toyota slash Subaru hold it down with the BRZ, the FRS. Well, they're figuring out, they got they got to like collab on these fucking cars. Yeah. Collabs and, are like so but, hot right but now. But that's a great car. It's lightweight, it it's manual, it yeah. sounds cool, and mm -hmm. does whatever kind of driving you want it mm -hmm. to do. And then for Toyota to be like, all right, you guys want it, so we'll try this manual thing out. Because also the Nissan 400Z is here. Yeah. So uh, the Supra, I don't know if I would call it affordable. It's uh, not really. Yeah. The the four-cylinder one kind of is, but it also kind of sucks. Yeah, it's like, are you going like to... The this? BMW 230i is much nicer than the four-cylinder Supra, mm. and they have the same engine. And the 230i feels way faster mm -hmm. than the four-cylinder Supra, yeah. too. We I just had it. It's not manual. It's automatic only. But it's like light, flickable... Great diff, yeah. great brakes. I forgot fucking... that there was a four cylinder Supra. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, it's easy. It's very forgettable. The four hundred Z is supposed to be kind of affordable, but 
Dealers- still, still forty to fifty grand plus markup. Yeah, yeah. dealerships aren't gonna like let yeah. that thing just go for. It'll be sticker. affordable in three years, right? So. Um, Oliver Green says we all know about the LS swapped RX sevens, but where is the rotary swapped Corvette? Have you heard of Rob Dom? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, that's what I replied yeah. on Chaz. Like, yeah. Rob Dom, it's yeah. Rob Dom, Dom has a rotary swap. Yeah, check out Rob Dom. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously not going to be a common thing. Yeah. Corvettes are Corvettes for a reason. Yeah, um, You have to be an idiot to swap a <laughs> rotary into a Corvette. I love you, Rob Dom. Yeah. Thank you for being our idiot because yeah. it's wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah. But, he's a uh, professional idiot. Yeah, yeah. It's, different. it's It's a skill, honestly. He's got, yeah, talent. Uh, Dom Dom Hall Murphy uh, works at a Lexus dealership, and I have previously mentioned that uh, Lexus dealerships in the late 90s and early 2000s were the creme de la creme of dealership experiences. What made them so memorable? I mean, I so really extended service hours. The Lexus dealer by us, when my mom had her cars, was literally the service bar was open until midnight. Yeah. So you could work in, and it was, and actually it was right next to the, the the train station. So my dad would drop the car off for service, take the train into work, come home from work at like eight thirty at night, and then go go get his his car from service right after that. Like they had like really good coffee in the waiting room. They weren't like pushy. Um, they just really understood. They always had tons of loaner cars yeah you always got a loaner um it, and 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 it was uh it was just a just generally uh product confident non-pushy uh sales and service experience they yeah. were great so for a while i had a 2009 is250 mm-hmm. and um I, I used to change my own oil and stuff like that. And then a friend of mine was like, why don't you just take this thing to the Lexus? And I was like, it's cheap. He, you know, he was telling me how cheap it was. I was like, it can't be cheap to get an oil change at a dealership. Yeah. I went to the dealership, it's 35 bucks. They give you a car wash, you get water. Yeah. I was like, what the, what, I've been doing this, like, you can't beat wow. that experience. Yeah. yeah, I was like, it was great. And, and a lot of that stuff that is stuff that a high-end dealer would do today, but not everybody was doing that yeah. back in like they they had to start doing that to because in the nineties Lexus was smoking people. Yeah, I mean they don't have the market share today that they had back then. But like it was just it was so much better than everything else, especially if you came out of like American cars yeah. or lower end Japanese cars. The showrooms, marble floors and brass and gla- I mean it was right. they had to build all new dealers and so it was kind of mind blowing. It was amazing. Yeah. And then oh by the way the fucking the cars never broke. Right. On top, on top of that, honestly, Lexuses did not break. I mean, you. My mom never had to take any. She had five RXs. Never took one to a dealer for anything besides regular service ever. That's probably why the oil changes are so cheap. The service guys are bored. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. You gotta get something to do. <laughs> They're not Dude, fixing I, shit. I mean, it yeah. just keeps you coming back for sure. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I don't know. I love Lexus. I do, too. I, like, I still love Lexus. Yeah, Their time. V8s are awesome. That 5-liter V8's great. I took my GS300, painted it, lowered it, put a body kit on it, put a 600-horsepower 2J in it, drove it across country. Stole Lexus. From Long Beach to Florida. <laughs> you had a couple stops along the way. I watched that video series. <laughs> a couple stops. A couple stops. A couple stops. <laughs> I was going to call you out a little couple, bit. A couple stops. But yeah, yeah, maybe not I, straight across the but country. But I did. I, did I, I mean, I, I, wanted, like, I applauded your uh, ambition, and I just I do like what you do with that kind of stuff. Like, I that. was really that, cool. It's very cool that. to watch. Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming in, man. It's my pleasure. We need Thank to work on your me. Instagram DM game. You're the Dude, worst Instagram DM ever. So fun ever. fact, Matt hit me up in 2018 <laughs> to do this show. <laughs> and and then he DMs me a couple weeks ago to re-invite me because I, I you know and I'm it not gonna lie. the conversation. Look, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like for years, I'm like, man, Matt has never asked me to come on the show. <laughs> and, like, and then you message me a couple weeks ago. I'm like, oh shit, here it is. And then I scroll up and I see 2018. Hey, you want to come on my show? I'm like, oh. And you man. were like, you were like, yeah, let's do it. And then disappeared. <laughs> And I, I also DM'd you, hilarious. and I don't have the check mark, but I DM'd you saying, like, would you like to come on the TST podcast? Like, trying to get guests because yeah. that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> I have to, I'll, yeah. I'll well, now, I, now I have your phone this. number, so yeah, it's easier. Dude, we don't have to I'm, go through that system. Dude, I'm stoked to come back. This, no, this is awesome. fun. I'm glad fun. you finally like, did it. I don't know. I, your story is crazy. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't done a lot of podcasts, but I, I like this. This is cool. Radio's yeah. great, isn't yeah, it? I love fucking radio. So if you ever want me as just a side piece, you need some backup, hit me up. Fuck yeah. Well, I want to drive the RX7. All right. 
yeah, yeah. Now so we gotta, we'll, so collab we'll do over that there. and a podcast for on sure. Top of it. For yeah, sure. Dude. Thank you for coming, man. Dude. Hurt Life on Instagram, H E R T L I F E. And of course, on all the fucking Hoonigan properties. Thanks, man. And read that Road and Track article. It's in your Instagram bio. It's yeah. a great piece. You did a great job. And I, no, you did. I, as editor at large for Road and Track, yeah. I'm fucking proud that it's in my magazine. Yeah. Um, are you going to Pebble Beach? Um, no, I never. I mean, give me an invite. And you I'll go. should. Yeah. God damn, would I love to get your take give me, on Pebble give me, Beach? Give me an invite. I just want to see the Dude, I wonder if fucking. I'm gonna Not call right, Road and Track. Like, I'm gonna see if we have a pass. Yeah, give me in. If there. we have a pass, when that'll it? be. It's like in two weeks. Yeah, give me in. Dude. Well, wait. Oh, I, August 18th to 22nd. I know who's I in think charge of their passes. I do too. Oh, okay. I, I, I think mean, I'm, of course I'm, I do. Too. But yeah, I think I'm around for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna see if I can yeah, get you a pass. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, there's a, there's the fucking story. I'm super down. All right. Have fun with your mom at the airport. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go to PT, Zach. We're on time. See you guys.